Good morning, everybody. The committee meets today to consider the important issue of military commissions and the trial of detainees for violations of the law of, of war. On June 25th, the committee unanimously voted to include a provision on military commissions in the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2010. This bill has now been sent to the full Senate for its consideration. I thank our ranking member, Senator McCain, as well as Senator Graham and all the members of the committee for their work on this important matter. In its 2006 decision in the Hamdan case, the Supreme Court held that common Article Three of the Geneva Conventions prohibits the trial of detainees for violations of the law of war unless the trial is conducted, quote, by a regularly constituted court affording all of the judicial guarantees which are recognized as indispensable by civilized peoples, close quote. The court concluded that, quote, the regular military courts in our system are the courts martial established by congressional statutes, close quote, but that a military commission can be regularly constituted by the standards of our military justice system, quote, if some practical need explains deviations from court martial practice, close quote. Similarly, the court found that the provision for, quote, judicial guarantees which are recognized as indispensable by civilized peoples, requires at a minimum that any deviation from the procedures governing courts martial be justified by evident practical need. The Supreme Court found that the military commissions established pursuant to President Bush's military order of November 13, 2001, failed to meet that test. The military commissions subsequently authorized by Congress and the Military Commissions Act of 2006 also clearly fail to meet that test as well because they deviate from court-martial practice by permitting the routine use of coerced testimony, by authorizing reliance on hearsay evidence even when direct evidence is reasonably available, and by establishing a presumption that the procedures and precedents applicable in trials by court-martials will not apply to military commissions. The double failure that I've just described to establish a system that provides basic guarantees of fairness identified by our Supreme Court has placed a cloud over military commissions and has led some to conclude that the use of military commissions can never be fair, credible, or consistent with our basic principles of justice. While the previous Congress's effort failed to meet the standards established by the Supreme Court in the Hamden case, I believe that military commissions can be designed to meet those standards, and that if they do, they can play a legitimate role in prosecuting violations of the law of war. President Obama has said that he believes this as well. In his May 21, 2009 speech at the National Archives, the President said, quote, military commissions have a history in the United States Dating back to George Washington and the Revolutionary War, they are an appropriate venue for trying detainees for violations of the laws of war. They allow for the protection of sensitive sources and methods of intelligence gathering. They allow for the safety and security of participants and for the presentation of evidence gathered from the battlefield that cannot always be effectively presented in federal courts. Now, instead of using the flawed commissions of the last seven years, and now I'm continuing the quote of President Obama, instead of using the flawed commissions of the last seven years, my administration is bringing our commissions in line with the rule of law. We will no longer permit the use of evidence as evidence statements that have been obtained using cruel and human or degrading interrogation methods we will no longer place the burden to prove that hearsay is unreliable on the opponent of the hearsay, and we will give detainees greater latitude in selecting their own counsel and more protections if they refuse to testify. These reforms, he said, among others, will make our military commissions a more credible and effective means of administering justice, and I will work with Congress and members of both parties as well as legal authorities across the political spectrum on legislation to ensure that these commissions are fair, legitimate, and effective. 
The procedures for military commissions have varied over the years as the procedures followed in our military justice system have varied. The Supreme Court noted in the Hamden case that while procedures governing trials by military commission are typically those governing courts martial, the quote uniformity principle is not an inflexible one. It does not preclude all departures from the procedures dictated for use by court martial, but any departure, the Supreme Court said, must be tailored to the exigency that necessitates it. That is the standard that we've tried to apply in adopting the procedures for military commissions that we have included in the bill that we referred to the full Senate. This new language addresses a long series of problems with the military commission procedures currently in law. For example, relative to the admissibility of coerced testimony, the provision in our bill would eliminate the double standard in existing law under which coerced statements are admissible if they were obtained prior to December 30, 2005. Relative to the use of hearsay evidence, the provision in our bill would eliminate the extraordinary language in the existing law which places the burden on detainees to prove that hearsay evidence introduced against them is not reliable and probative. Relative to the issue of access to classified evidence and exculpatory evidence, the provision in our bill would eliminate the unique procedures and requirements which have hampered the ability of defense teams to obtain information and have led to so much litigation. We would substitute the more established procedures based on the Uniform Code of Military Justice with modest changes to ensure that the government cannot be required to disclose classified information to unauthorized persons. And of great importance, the provision in our bill would reverse the existing presumption in the Military Commissions Act of 2006 that rules and procedures applicable to trials by court martial would not apply. Our new language says, by contrast, that, quote, except as otherwise provided, the procedures and rules of evidence applicable in trials by general court marshals of the United States shall apply in trials by military commission under this chapter. The exceptions to this rule are, as suggested by the Supreme Court, carefully tailored to the unique circumstances of the conduct of military and intelligence operations during hostilities. Three years ago, when the committee considered similar legislation on military commissions, I urged that we apply two tests. First, will we be able to live with the procedures that we establish if the tables are turned and our own troops are subject to similar procedures? Second, is the bill consistent with our American system of justice and will it stand up to scrutiny on judicial review? I believe those remain the right questions for us to consider and that the language that we have included in the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2010 meets both tests. Over the last three years, we have seen the legal advisor to the convening authority for military commissions forced to step aside after a military judge found that he had compromised his objectivity by aligning himself with the prosecution. We have had prosecutors resign after making allegations of improper command influence and serious deficiencies in the military commission process. We've had the chief defense counsel raise serious concerns about the adequacy of resources made available to defendants in military commission cases, writing that, quote, regardless of its other procedures, no trial system will be fair unless the serious deficiencies in the current system's approach to defense resources are rectified. So even if we're able to enact new legislation that successfully addresses the shortcomings in existing law, we still have a long way to go to restore public confidence in military commissions and the justice that they produce. However, we will not be able to restore confidence in military commissions at all unless we first substitute new procedures and language to address the problems with the existing statute. Again, I want to thank Senator McCain, Senator McGram, and the other members of the committee for all of the work that they put into this bill and to this issue, and uh, the Senate will be considering the entire bill, including these provisions, hopefully uh, starting next Monday or Tuesday.